Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I certainly wish I could type like Lottie. Well, stop wishing. It's time you were on your way. You mean to say you're throwing me out? Bodily. All right, all right, all right. I'm going. Don't rush me. This happens to be a place of business. Oh, David, it's such a lovely office. You make it sound so stuffy. Place of business. I Frankly, think. Claudia, I hate to see you well, go. I think you, this Roger. office needs female charm such as only you can contribute. Mm, you talk so pretty, Roger. Remember, you have Lottie. Lottie is not the same. Well, I think she's wonderful. I agree she's wonderful in her way, but she is not the same. Well, everybody's never the same. Yeah, it's a good thing, too. One Claudia is as much as the world needs. Oh, what? darling, you're so flattering. Frankly, though, I wish I were more like Lottie. Good heavens. In what way? She's so efficient. Well, she is that. She's as efficient as a adding machine. I know, I know. I'm terrible with adding. She's not as efficient as an adding machine. She's as efficient as a tornado. Mm. Just exactly the kind of secretary we need. And she's sitting right outside the door, so talk louder, why don't you both of them? She can't hear us, and if she can, all right. Because I admit she's wonderful. As a secretary. Well, I think you're both very lucky men to have Lottie in your office. Attractive, amusing, loyal, marvelous disposition. And a mouth that never stops working. If she's not chewing words, she's chewing gum. Roger hides his immense affection for Lottie behind harsh words. I know. He wouldn't part with her for a million. She's a bully and a watchdog. Sometimes she makes me feel like the International Business Machine Company <laughs> instead of a firm of architects. Well, that's not a bad way to feel. I wonder what else about her. What do you mean? Well, I mean, when a woman who comes into the office is bursting with ideas about typing paper and letterheads and ledgers and other dribble and drabble of office work, I wonder what else about her. She lives with her mother. Well, I lived with Mama all my life, until David. That's the whole point. No, David has come along for Lottie. And I must say, it doesn't interest me a great deal. Say, I wonder if we would know anybody who who might... You know, she'd, she'd make somebody a wonderful wife. Whoop, stop, stop, right there. Hold stop it, what? Hold what it. do you mean? Stop marriage brokering. What is it about happily married women that makes them feel it's their responsibility to see everybody else married? Well, they don't like to see others scot-free. Now, will you skadoodle? We've got work to do. I'm quite happy to go. Well, then go. If it were up to me, my dear, I wouldn't treat you that way. But I never interfere between a husband and wife. The uh, door is open, madam. You going to meet Mom and me for lunch? I don't know if I can get away. Oh, Mom is going out to Long Island pretty soon, David. You might not see her for a while. In that case, I'll meet you for lunch. Thanks. Uh, tell Mama it's only for her. She knows. Well, goodbye, David. Goodbye. Body? Nice seeing you again. Mm, so long, Mrs. Norton. Do drop in again. You must come up to the country sometime soon, too. Oh, yeah, country. Mm, it's so laborious getting there, seeing as it's not in New York. But someday I'll pull up my spirit and make the trip, perhaps. Uh, David, you don't have to push me. I'm going. Where and what time? No. Lunch. Oh, lunch. Of yes, course. lunch. One o'clock. That little restaurant around the corner from the big ten-cent store? If I Mama's? eat with you, I will not eat cheap. It is not cheap. We'll eat at, uh, well, the chase. I'll meet you there. Spendthrift. Hey, don't I get a kiss? I am tight with kisses. Besides, I repeat, this is a place of business. Well, we can act as if I'm a customer. Architects don't have customers. They have clients. Then act as if I'm a client. I don't do business with lady clients. Well, then act as if I'm Kelly, for heaven's sake. Well, so long, Kelly, old man. Give me a ring about the steel estimate. Oh, oh, I'm certainly glad I'm not, Kelly. Ouch. David, what do I have to do to get a kiss out of you? Say goodbye. 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 Well, I said goodbye. But you didn't act goodbye. Goodbye. That's better. Oh, that's much better. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm, you've really done right by yourself, Mr. Norton. Your wife, she's some cute trick. Yeah, she feels the same way about you, Lottie. Mm. We ain't the same type, but she's nice, too. Most girls who work for men don't like their wives, but not Lottie. But not your wife, anyway. Well, I'm uh, glad you're pleased. It's funny about a boss's wife. 
She's usually never good enough for a boss. Oh, I left the letter from Mr. Carrington on your desk, Mr. Norton, no, with thanks. the information that he wanted. I wrote it in the margin. That's fine, Lottie. As soon as I get straightened out, I'll dictate you an answer. No hurry, Mr. Norton. I'm working on the bill, writing out checks. Mm. Sure does cost a lot of money to make money these days. David, hmm? I think your wife is very fond of you. Yeah, you make that sound as if it were a startling fact. For a wife to be fond of her husband, sometimes it is a startling fact. If I didn't know you better, I'd take you for the most immense cynic, but I know it's not your spirit, only your digestion. Now, what do you think we should do on that bid on the hospital job? Oh, where is that girl? Lottie? Be right in, Mr. Gideon. Bring in the plans on the Elmwood Hospital, would you please? What is she doing? I don't know. I guess she's talking on the phone or something. Roger, I know what you said yesterday about cutting down the elevator cost, and cost is probably the most important single factor in this bid, but I don't like to see it done at the sacrifice of convenience. Mm -hmm. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I was tied up on the telephone. That's all right. Here are the blueprints. Oh, I apologize for delaying, but... all right, Lottie. Oh, gosh, I tell that guy not to call me at the office, that I don't like to receive personal calls during business hours. (laughs) But what can you do? He says he's walking down the street... He sees a telephone booth, he finds he has a nickel, and the next thing you know, he's gabbing to me. (laughs) Well, that's perfectly all right, Lottie. Did you say you had a young man, Lottie? Well, he ain't so young anymore. But then, (laughs) neither am I. But we was kind of young when we first met. Oh, this has been going on for a while. Mm, Short while. Edward and I, uh, we've been going together eight years. That's quite a while. Oh, heck, my girlfriend has been going with Arnold for 14 years. They just can't seem to make up their minds. Well, at least they're giving the big steps some thought. Mm. There's something to be said for that. Mm, too cautious. It don't pay sometimes to be too cautious. <laughs> but I ain't no one to talk. I don't seem to be able to make up my own mind, so how could I possibly make up my girlfriend's? Well, I think it's easier to make up someone else's mind than your own sometimes, Lottie. Mm, there's something in what you say, Mr. Norton. Gee, maybe if you could meet my fellow... You could make up my mind for me. Well, I'm not so sure I'd want the responsibility. Well, he ain't a bad sort. Of course, um, he ain't tall like you. I gotta wear flat heels so I can look him in the eye, but <laughs> you can't hold a man's sides against him, can you? Mm, I don't think it would be quite fair, no. That's what I said to myself when I first met Edward. I had to adjust myself. You know, I like big brawny men like you, Mr. Norton. Edward, he has a nice disposition, and that's very important to a girl. He works for the electric light company. That must be interesting work. No, he don't like it much. But he's been with them for 14 years, and it's nice and steady, and he gets bonuses and vacations, and when he's been with them 40 years, they'll pay him not to work. You know, a man's got to think about those things. Yes, a man has. Edward's not romantic like Spencer Tracy, or not even like you, Mr. Norton. Take a bow, David. Thank you. Being married to Edward wouldn't be all thrills and heartthrobs. Like the way it is for Mrs. Norton. Yeah. Kissing Edward ain't the most thrilling thing in the world. He don't make a a fuss about it like But he's got a nice disposition, and he's awfully nice to my mother. He brought her roses Christmas a year ago. Then there's no doubt about it. He wants to marry you, Lottie. Oh, sure he does. He mentioned it to me just six years ago. Now, I didn't give him a positive answer, though. But we've been going together ever since. And uh, not steady, mind you. Because if you're going steady with a fellow, you might as well be married to him and get those advantages. Um, Mr. Norton, I don't like to bother you, but should you meet Edward one day, it, it might help me make up my mind. Well, if I can be of any help to you, I certainly will, Lottie. Mm, I guess maybe then again you shouldn't. He wouldn't look so good next to you. Oh, what am I standing around here on one foot talking personal things with you and Mr. Killian? As you said, this is a place of business. Still one more set of blueprints to get on that job, Mr. Killian. I'll bring it right in. She ought to marry him. Get it over with. I'm not so sure I want our prize Lottie to throw herself away on this this Edward. Personally, I think Edward sounds very right for Lottie. Roses to her mother, Christmas last. What more could a girl want? Romance, excitement, and a man she can... Well, she can wear high heels with. (laughs) You just feel possessive and responsible because it's all your fault. What is? You spoil Lottie. 
In a way, she sees you as her husband, just as she is your office wife. Oh, don't say that. that. I say it just as you are her office husband. You're tall, you're handsome, you're talented. She sees only the better half of your nature, and so you've spoiled her. Now, look, I refuse to take the responsibility for Lottie's love life. Nevertheless, it is your responsibility, and she'll never make up her mind about Edward as long as she sees your image as a husband. Well, you're... You're making me very uncomfortable. I, I hope you realize And that. these romantic little scenes with your wife in the office don't help at all. Now, wait a minute. You'll give Lottie the idea that all marriages are like that. And they are not, you know. I shall forbid Claudia to enter this office. That won't help. Your telephone conversations, not that I accuse Lottie of listening in, but just the fact that you have them, that will keep her ideas of romantic marriage alive. Yeah, but marriage isn't all romance. Not even yours? I think yours is pretty close. I guess it's as close as it can be. Well, mark my words. And I'll have you know that I'm very miffed and hurt about this. You are coming between Lottie and Edward. Now, back to work. Now, this is the last word I want to hear on this, sir. I'm not interested either, matinee idol. No, are you having your fun? Here's the other set of blueprints, Mr. Killian. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lottie. And I'd like to repeat my excuses about my discussing my situation with you gentlemen, but sometimes a girl... Well... A man's point of view is a help. Well, I offered you my help, Lottie, and whenever you want to bring Edward around, I wish you would. You mean it, Mr. Norton? Have I ever told you anything I don't mean? Mm, that's true. You're always honest and frank and sympathetic and understanding. And, and you, Mr. Killian. Edward ain't at all like you. Gee, I wish he was. The man I could really go for, why... He'd be a combo of Mr. Killian and, well, Mr. Killian. Of me? Sure of you. Who else? Oh, well. A girl can dream, can't she? Well, I guess I'd better get back to work. Ooh, so you Casanova, you. It was you all the time she'd set her cap for. David, this is serious. The correct, punctilious, charming Mr. Killian. Every girl's dream, Mr. Casanova Killian. The mere word hospitality intimidates some women. They immediately conjure up images of so much preparation that all the fun goes out of party giving. But entertaining can be ever so simple if you have enough ice-cold Coca-Cola to go round. Just say, have a Coke, and the spirit of hospitality takes over. Say, Mr. King, there's something about Edward that's even like you. Well, I'm very flattered, Lottie. Well, he don't talk as nice as you do, but he's kind of gentle like you. Maybe what I like about Edward most is that he's a New Yorker. You love living in this big town, don't you? Oh, I wouldn't live no place else for all the money in Fort Knox. In spite of all the housing and shopping and traffic problems? In spite of? Heck, Mr. King, because of. Well, I'm afraid you wouldn't find Claudia agreeing with you. Not after her ride uptown in a taxi tomorrow, Lottie. Bye. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.